Hi world, today I thought it might be time to show you how I use Cura to slice a 3D model. We'll look at the settings I use and why I use them, as well as a quick look at the new Cura 3.1. Once you've loaded Cura, the first thing we're going to do is to load a model. I'm going to grab my token, PVG token, and before we go anywhere, we'll look at the navigation controls for Cura. If you click and hold your right mouse button, that will allow you to tumble the view, so you can look at your model from all angles. If you click on the model with your left mouse button, you could move it around the build plate, and you can see in my case, if I move it out of the build area, it will change colour. And if you want to re-centre your object, the quickest and easiest way is to right-click on it and select Centre on Platform. That will also centre your view. And the middle button or scroll wheel will zoom in and out as you roll the wheel. Now that we have our navigation under control, We'll have a look at the icon at the top right here, which is your view mode. If you left click on the view mode icon, you'll see we have normal, overhang, transparent, x-ray and layers. The two I normally use are normal and layers. If you click on layers, you'll see that it will show you the build path and the layers of your model as it's building. And this is a good place to check to see if it's actually going to print a top and bottom. Sometimes it won't automatically print a top and bottom unless you've told it to do so. And you will also be able to see the uh, structure of the infill as it's building, as well as check to see if there's going to be any issues that could happen as the printer is printing. And if you want to switch back to normal view, just click on view mode and normal and right click to center on platform again if you need to. Now let's have a look at the basic tab. The first item is layer height and this is where you specify the actual layer height of each layer. So point 0.1 is, is typically a normal sort of setting. Uh, often I'll print at 0 0.06 which will give me a much finer finer quality print, or if you want to go to a more coarser and faster print, you can select 0.2 for your layer height. And let's look at the time difference that each one uh, creates. So if we print at 0.2 millimeter layer height, you'll see our print will take, this particular model, will take 1 hour and 44 minutes. If we set that to 0.1, which is a finer resolution, you'll see our print time has jumped up to 3 hours and 25 minutes. If we set that to 0.06 millimeters, you'll see our, build, our print time is now 5 hours and 43 minutes. So your layer height contributes significantly to your uh, print time. I've settled on, I was printing at 0.06, but I've settled on 0.1 uh, nowadays. I find that 0.1 gives me a, a really nice print quality uh, without taking up you know, more time than is needed. The next item we'll look at is shell thickness. Now shell thickness is a multiple of your nozzle. So in my case my printer has a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, so each wall will be 0.4 millimeters thick. So if you wanted your wall of your model to be one layer, two layer, three layers, four layers thick, it's, it's simply a multiple of 0.4. So if I want three layers for my walls, I'll make that three times 0.4, which will be 1.2 millimeters. So 1.2 millimeter shell thickness will give me three, three walls at 0.4 millimeters. But I, I normally print at either one or two 
wall thickness, so 0.4 or 0.8 for me. The next item on the list is enable retraction. As my printer is a Bowden style printer, I always need retraction. The next item is bottom and top thickness. I always print, well I, in the start I printed about three or four layers or five layers for my, for my bottom and top thickness, which is the top of the item and the bottom of the model. Uh, now I've settled on 10 layers. I find 10 layers really helps to settle down any issues which may happen from bridging over a part where there's not much support. Uh, 10 layers will, will fill it up nicely and give me a nice smooth finish on top and bottom. So that's what I've settled on now, 10 layers. So in this case, each layer is 0.1 millimeters. So 0.1 times 10 is one millimeter. So I set my top and bottom thickness to one millimeter. The next item that I change regularly is my fill density. As you can see here, I've got it set to 25. So the last model I printed, I wanted uh, to have more infill in the mesh. And if we switch to layer view, we'll be able to see, you'll need to wait till the loading tool path for visualization has finished loading. And then we can just use our uh, slider to view the model internal. And you can see here, I've currently set to 25% fill density. Um, I can set that back to whatever I like. If I go 10 and wait for our visualization to load, you can see it's a, it's a much sparser infill in the model. And this is fine, but in this case, when it gets to this top layer, these passes are not going to have a lot of support with this little infill. So I'd probably set this infill to maybe 15 or 20% would be a good number for this size model. And you can see once it starts printing the top layers, there's going to be enough mesh here to support those top layers. The next item is print speed for speed and temperature. I always just leave that set to 50. I don't play with that setting at all. Print temperature, I always print at 195 degrees C. I don't change that at all. The next item is support. And this is where if I was printing a model with a lot of overhangs or, or um, an area that may need a lot of bridging, I would use support in this case. And sometimes it'll be touching, just touching the bill plate, or sometimes it'll be everywhere. So. So in the case of a character where his chin is above his chest, even though there's no direct line of sight from the chin down to the bill plate, what will happen is that the slicing software will automatically include supports from his chest up to the bottom of his chin. So that's where, where you would use everywhere. But most times you're probably going to use touching bill plate. In this instance, this model doesn't need any support. So I've got none turned on. And the last item is filament, which is 1.75 millimeter diameter filament is what I print with. And I, I don't touch that, nor do I touch the flow at 100%. If we look at the next tab, this is our advanced settings. Now that I've got this set up the way I like, I don't really go into here anymore. Uh, my nozzle size is 0.4. Retraction speed is 40. Uh, distance is seven. Sometimes, uh, well, I, it was lower, but I've made it seven for to reduce stringing. If I find I get still am getting stringing, I'll probably bump the distance up to eight and give that a test. But at the moment, seven's working quite well. My initial layer thickness for the first layer that it's printing is 0.3. My initial layer line width is 110. It's normally set to 100. I've made it a little bit wider. I really want that first layer to push into the bed. This setting here, cut off bottom, I don't touch. Dual extrusion, I don't touch. Travel speed, I leave at 80. Bottom layer speed, I've set to 15 to slow it down. Uh, I really want that bottom layer to bond well to the print bed. Infill speed, I've left at 50. And top, bottom, inner shell, I've left at 15, 15 and 30. And cool, I don't touch that at all. It's just set at five and enable cooling fan. And the last tab I look at is expert, the expert settings. 
And if we look here, my retraction, I'll leave it 1.5. Combing, I don't touch that. Minimal extrusion before retracting, I don't touch that setting. Z hop is where I will change the setting from time to time. If I'm printing at 0 0.06 layer height, I will have this set to 0, .0 as, you, as you can see in the description, 0 0.075 is good if I'm printing at 0 0.06 layer height. But in this instance, I'm printing this at 0.1 millimeters. So I've set my Z hop to 0.15. I think you want that a little bit higher than your layer height. If my layer height was 0.1 and I had this set to 0.075, which I have had in the past, I've found that the nozzle can clip parts of the model as it's moving across the model. So now at 0.1, I set my Z hop to 0, uh, 0.15. The next item is skirt. In the past, I would print with either a brim or a raft. Brim is where it, it puts down layers. Well, let's, I'll show you here. We'll turn brim on. And you can see here, I've got, if we look at the brim settings here, I've got five lines for my brim. So it will lay down five lines of filament around the outside of my model and then start printing my model. In the past where I've had poor bed adhesion, I've used Brim, but I really don't like Brim now because this, the last layer tends to stick to the first layer of the model and leaves a, a sharp edge on the bottom of, of the model which needs to be either sanded, filed or cleaned up. So I don't use Brim at all now, now that I've got good bed adhesion. And if we look at Raft, Raft will lay down a raft first for your model to print onto. And if you're having poor bed adhesion, this can sometimes help. But in my case, I found that if I've got poor bed adhesion, uh, the poor bed adhesion also applies to the raft. So I've printed a raft and then the raft started to curl and then the models tried to print on top of a curling raft. So you really need to get your bed adhesion down. I think that's the key to, to good printing. Get that bed adhesion sorted. And the best way for me is to ensure that I get that nozzle very close to the to the print bed uh, using feeler gauges at 0.08 millimeter gap. And I find that works very well. And simply clean the bed with isopropyl alcohol, give it a good soak, wipe it off with a clean towel, and you're ready to print. And that works very well for me. Now going back to our expert settings, we're on to skirt. So instead of brim or raft, I now use a skirt. And I've got it down to a point. Now you won't see skirt if we scroll down. While raft or brim is selected, you won't see or have the option for a skirt. To have the option for a skirt to work, you need to turn off both brim and raft. And once you've done that, now you can see that my skirt line is now available. And you set your skirt with the line count here. Now in the past I've printed with five, five lines for the skirt as you can see here. And this is the distance from the model. I leave it set to three millimeters. Uh, but nowadays I just print with one, one line for the skirt. And that's just primarily to get the nozzle flowing nicely. Uh, before it actually starts printing on the model and that works really well for me. Minimal length I don't touch. Fan full on at height. I've set this to two millimeters and I've set my fan speed to 10 and max uh, fan speed max to 100. Thinking that the print would start with only 10% fan speed which would make the bed and the print warmer and uh, cool down slower which should reduce warping and curling. But I found on my particular printer, which is the LD Cocoon Create, that it doesn't seem to make any difference and the fan speed is on at 100% the whole time, no matter what I do to these settings here. So I leave it set at 2, 10 and 100, but really it doesn't seem to make any difference and the fan uh, that's on the uh, print head is just running 100% the whole time. Infill solid infill top, solid infill bottom, which is what I want. 
uh, infill overlap is 15%. Now, infill prints after perimeters. I always have this ticked because I want the perimeter of the model, which is the edge of the model, to be a nice, clean, laid down line of filament and then the infill prints on the inside of it. If you have that ticked off, it'll start printing the infill first and then run your exterior perimeter line around the edge of the infill, uh, which I find is not as nice as printing the edges first. A structure type here, when we get moved to support, I leave set to lines. You can have grid, but I just leave it set to lines. Uh, overhang angle, I don't touch. Fill amount is set by the basic tab at the start. Distance, I leave set at one millimeter on the X and Y and 0.15 on the Z. Now this is the next interesting setting that we have in the expert config settings and that is spiralize the outer contour. Now what spiralize the outer contour does is basically print in vase mode. So vase mode is where the print head will ignore the structure or infill or anything like that and just basically keep printing in one continuous path around the outside of the model until it's got to the top, from bottom to top, as you would if you were printing a vase. And so sometimes I'll print a model in this mode where I don't care about any infill or anything on the inside of it. And it's just, it's good for doing tests, so it's quick because it's just one thin layer all the way up and you can get a look at how the model's looking. And then if I want to then go back and make some tweaks or changes to the model, I can then go and set my infills and print it that way. So basically use spiralize the outer contour if you want to print in vase mode. Only follow mesh surface. That's another setting you can tick if you need to, but I tend to just click spiralize the outer contour and that will just ignore the other settings and just print in, in vase mode. Here's where you can also set your brim line amount. That's also available in those little option box beside the platform adhesion type setting. And here are your raft settings if you are printing with a raft. Now this setting down here, Fix Horrible, is if you're being a bit sloppy with your model and, and you're not joining your pieces together properly, you can just assemble a few different pieces together and have them all intersecting and make one shape. If you tick Combine Everything Type A or Type B, it will just go out around the outside of the model and, for, and create try and create one mesh. I tend not to have that ticked on and I tend to just leave keep faces open. So if I've got an open face, when I'm designing or modeling, that open face is there by intention and I don't want it filled. So I leave that ticked on. Uh, extensive stitching, I don't worry about. And if I was being sloppy with my modeling, then I would perhaps use combine everything type A or type B, but I try and sort all that out in Blender before I export the model as an STL. And that's it. So that's a quick look at the settings and the way I use them in Cura. Now this is Cura version 16.04. Uh, there is another a version of Cura, which is Cura 3.1. And that's a brand new version, if you like. This was the original Cura. Uh, the Cura 3.1 is a new version. And it's a version which has a lot of nice features that I like. But there currently is no printer profile for my particular printer, which is the LD Cocoon Create. I am in the process of making a profile for the new version of Cura because I would like to use that and try it out and give it a go. And once I have that profile sorted, I will certainly be sharing it with you guys. All right, well, that's it for today. Uh, thanks for watching the video. Uh, I hope it was of use and you learned something. Uh, have a great day and I'll see you later.